Okay, there's um, three types of protein receptors inside the cell membrane that we're going to talk about. And there's one type of receptor that's actually inside the cytoplasm or inside the cytosol. Okay, so the first one is the most common, and it's G-protein. So when the ligand binds to the G-protein, it changes shape. So that's actually reception of signal transduction. But all cells have a G-protein, and it's just the most common for um, cell communication, and it responds with a to a ligand, which is a hormone or a signal molecule. Okay, so G-protein was first. The second one we'll talk about is the ligand-gated ion channel. Okay, so when the ligand binds, the gate opens up. And when the gate opens up, it allows ions, ions are charged particles, to come in through the channel. So the name of this one gives it away. Ligand gated ion, which is a charged particle, channel. These are um, found in neurons most commonly, so that sodium can flood in during depolarization. So ligand binds, gate opens. So that's the second one. The third one we'll talk about is tyrosine kinase. When the ligand binds to this one, you remember a ligand is a chemical message. When, when the ligand binds to it, tyrosine kinase slides together. And you see the scaffolding proteins on tyrosine kinase right here? It's going to amplify a response or catalyze transduction quickly. So it can actually do six at a time. You can see from the scaffolding proteins. So this one is used for emergency growth uh, or repair when your cells need to communicate. Okay, this one right here is intracellular receptors. Okay, so the ligand which is a steroid this time. When the ligand binds, it actually binds on the inside of the cytoplasm. So it comes in, it goes through the cell membrane, it goes into the cytoplasm or the cytosol. So this one's for steroids. Okay, so we have G protein, which is most common. This one allows ions in. This one is for steroids and it's inside. You wanna know that steroids bind on the inside of the cytoplasm. And then tyrosine kinase is for quick amplification for emergency repair. Okay, so there's, there's those. There's two types of secondary messengers that you need to know from your notes. Okay, the first secondary messenger that you want to know is when the ligand binds. The first secondary messenger we're going to know is IP3. So when the ligand binds, the G protein attaches to an enzyme called PIP2. So that's the ligand binds, conformational shape change. PIP2 makes a molecule called IP3. This right here is the secondary messenger. And it goes in or attaches to the smooth ER. And smooth ER, if you remember, stores calcium. So IP3 is the message that tells the smooth ER to release calcium, and the calcium will attach to the myosin fibers and muscle cells, and the muscle will flex. So the thing you want to know here is that IP3 is the secondary messenger. It moves around in the cytoplasm, and it tells the smooth ER to release the calcium. Okay, the second secondary messenger that you need to know is CAMP. Okay, so in the ligand binds, G protein attaches to adenylyl cyclase. So that is, that's reception. Transduction, it makes CAMP, which is the secondary messenger. This is cyclase adenosyl, uh, adenylene monophosphate. So it's got one phosphate. Like ATP has three, but it's got one. So CAMP is going to bind with protein kinase and turn it on. So it's going to activate protein kinase. And when that happens, it's going to release glucose from liver cells. So epinephrine was the, the ligand here. That's a hormone that attaches to adenylyl cyclase, makes CAMP, and then the response is glucose. So while we're here, let me review signal transduction. There's three steps. Reception, G protein binds, I mean ligand binds to the G protein, and it changes shape. The ligands are specific to the protein receptors. Transduction is where the message is converted on the inside of the cell. 
So here you see CAMP was converted. And then the response was to release glucose from the liver cells. Got it. Thank you.